and Jamaica, and um, it is my um, hope and prayer that as um, I'm new to this area and the Ragnar Church, I can be a blessing to everyone. Mm -hmm. All right, so this evening, we're going to be looking at um, simple, natural remedies that you can find in your homes or in your kitchen. So as you look at my table, what are some of the things that you can see up here? Cabbage, grapefruit, garlic, honey, honey, what? Turmeric. Yes, turmeric. Mm -hmm. Olive oil. Castor oil. Is that a radish? Radish. Ginger. Alright, put your hands so I can hear them. 
The one we trust, okay? Anybody else? The dealer, right? All right. Someone that is reputable? A good one, all right. All right, so when my car gets bad, I, the first place I turn to, it's the one who made the car. Right? Because they are the one that put all the details in that car and they will know exactly what's wrong with that car. So, today we heard a message. The message was, God is our creator. Right? So, our body is like a vehicle. Agreed? When something goes wrong to our body, who is the first person we go to? The, crea the creator, I, I mean, we, let's, we're just talking, but seriously, when something goes wrong with your body, who is the first person? Is, is, is the first person God? Is he the first person most of the time? Come on, let's be real. We go to the doctor, right? Everybody, most of us has like a family doctor, and you know, the first thing, man, let's go and check this out because I don't understand this pain, right? But the first person we we, we should go to is who? God. Because he's the one that made us. And so, when you start feeling sick, the first thing you need to do is what? Pray. You need to pray and ask God to lead you, ask for what's going on. I'm not saying that the doctors are totally bad. I'm not here saying that. Right? Because there comes a place when you need a doctor. But all I'm saying here today is that whenever we get sick or we feel any pain or we see any swelling, Anything that is going bad in our body, the first person we need to consult is our maker. All right, number one. Number two, you say that when we get sick, we should seek help first, right? Yes. And what are you seeking help for? What are you seeking help for? What for the sickness? No, I mean, like, seriously, when you go to the doctor, why do why you go to the doctor? What do you do? You, you try to find out what's wrong, right? You want a diagnosis. What about you, sis? Yes, you Not just a diagnosis, you want to do it too. You need to ascertain the cause. That's number one. And what does ascertain the cause mean? Find out what's wrong. That's the first step. Then second, after you ascertain the cause, what is the next step? Right? There has to be something that is causing the problem. 
right? And so before I can recommend anything, I'm going to try to find out what is the underlying problem. Fair? All right. Here's our inspiration, guys. I'm going to read this quote to you. And it's taken from Consuls to Health, page 506. As religious aggressions subvert the liberties of our nation, those who would stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable position. For their own sake, they should, while they have an opportunity, become intelligent in regards to disease, its causes, prevention, and its cure. And those who do this will find a field of labor anywhere. And those there, there will be suffering ones, plenty of them, who will need our help, not only among our own faith, but largely among those who do not know the truth. And so this evening, as I take the time out to, as we take the time out to share with you some item therapies that you can use in your home, you can use with your friends, neighbors, whoever it is, and we're just hoping that it will not just stop here. God is preparing us as a people. The help message is the right arm of the gospel. And so we all need to become intelligent to medical missionary work. Amen. All right, this evening, um, Janelle is going to um, be doing our first demonstration. And that's the eye therapy. You know what I mean? I also went to um, meet ministry where I got trained in medical missionary, spent some time myself um, doing house to house work and working in sanitary. And so today we're going to be doing a couple of hydrotherapy demonstrations. The first one we're going to start off with is the hot foot bath. How many of us in here have headaches? Every now and then. Headaches? Headaches? Okay, stomach cramps? It's always cold all the time. Cold hands, cold feet, right? Any other pain that you might be feeling in the body, right? We all can relate to this. So, at this time, I need a volunteer from maybe the audience to come on up. And we're going to do a simple hot foot bath. Thank you. All right, so before we start a hot foot bath, you need to know what you need to use for a hot foot bath. Can you hear me? No, you can't hear me? Yeah. 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 All right, one more time, so I have a loud voice. All right, so with the hot foot bath, first you want to start off with your, a tub, a basin, okay? So you want to get a basin. We're going to do a dry run, so you don't need to take your, your shoes off today. Unfortunately, we can't do the actual run of it. We're going to do a dry run, so we're going to tell you all the things that you would need for your hot foot bath. So first you want to get your basin. Get your basin ready. Then the next thing, make sure you have your hot water. Hot water ready. So roughly speaking, you want your temperature of your water to be from 103 degrees, no more than 110 degrees Celsius. So you want to, not Celsius, Fahrenheit. 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 Fahrenheit, I'm sorry. Okay. So make sure you have your hot water ready. The next thing you want to do is have another basin with ice and some water. This is in the event that you start to overheat too much, you're gonna get a rag, you're gonna place it in here, just to put on the forehead in case the body is being warm too much, just to cool the head down. You don't want that to happen, then that doesn't help you if you are trying to uh, address any diseases or any um, health conditions that you might have. So you wanna have your hot water ready, you want to also have your ice bath ready as well. The next thing you want to do is I get your rag for the fold, put it in there to start soaking. And the next thing you want to have is just your, your sheet. Something that is going to wrap all around the body so that we can trap some of that heat in. That way we're not creating a draft. You want to make sure you're able to do this high foot back from anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. So we're going to do a dry run CSC.
you all see? Yes. So you can do this to yourself or if you're helping someone. So if you do it to yourself, make sure you have all your supplies ready. You don't want to get under there and then you're, oh, I forgot more hot water. Or, oh, I didn't have my ice bath ready. So make sure you have all of your supplies, everything that you need before. But in this event, someone is helping her. So what we're going to do is, before, no, do it for yourself. All right? So before somebody, before she puts her foot in, you want to test it out to make sure. And if you don't have a the thermometer, they said try using your elbow. You just put your elbow in. If it's too hot, then for sure you cannot tolerate the heat on your foot. Now, when do you think you don't want to do a hot foot bath? When do you think, what health conditions would I have that would prevent me from doing this hot foot bath? Yes. Diabetes. That diabetes. Anything else? The increased sensation. Anything else? So, poor circulation, you want to be careful with that. Even though this helps to boost your circulation, you want to be careful with that. Anyone that has any cardio issues or any disturbances in related to the heart, so you want to be very careful. Then, instead of doing a hot foot bath, you just do like a loop, loop warm, so warm bath, not hot. All right, so I pour my water in. All right, and before I do, I check the temperature. And so, I'm going to ask, Maya's going to slowly put her foot in just to see if she can tolerate the heat. Are you good? Is that good? Yes. All right. It's a little hot, so we a little, put a little cool in, but then what we do is submerge the foot in there. We want to make sure the water is covering the ankles. So just above the ankles, make sure the water is covering the ankles. As soon as you have that ready, you're going to just wrap the whole body covering the basin. So we want to push the basin in just a little bit more. You can use a safety pin or a close pin just to secure it in the back.
So is the kid supposed to be trained to one of the towers? I don't get that question. She's asking us the head supposed to be draped to one of the towels. Not, ne not necessarily. You can do it like you that. Can. You can do it like this, or you can do it like that. Do, do you go to the Did it go if did you start to see sweat? That's what she's saying. When and then signs of sweat. You have your little um, wet cloth that you're using to just dental pat the face to keep her cool. Alright? And this is very good for people who can't sleep. As she says, to calm the nerves. Yes, ma'am? How is this for anxiety? You have the shakes and just have the shakes. She's asking me. When you get anxious and stuff, you, your nerves are not calming down, so you can use it. Okay. Yes. Okay. It helps to relax the body. It's very good if you put um, lavender oil in it. It's our, our rosemary oil. Lavender. Lavender. lavender or rosemary. Those two will help to calm it down. <laughs> the eyes. Inspiration and 
encourages us to cover our feet because there is where you have the biggest um, pores in your body. Okay. And you lose most of your body temperature through your feet. Yes. When, so it is people who have difficult sleeping, pelvic pain, and um, Right, any kind of um, congestion. Okay. Any more questions for we move on? All how right. Often, um, how often should we do it? Right. Well, if you have to be doing this more than one time a week, then you want to check out what's going on with me. You know, for you to be constantly having an headache or congestion in my head, it can be a sinus headache. So you might need to check to see if you're eating something that is triggered off, you know, or it might be that you're dehydrated. Because remember now, remember, natural remedy is the last thing, right? It's not about, oh, something is happening to me, I'm going to run to natural remedy. Ascertain your cost first, so you don't have to be doing active that every day. Uh, what is the suggested duration? Um, 10 to 30 minutes a time, each time you do it. Okay. All right, we're going to move on to the next treatment. Thank you, my sister. <laughs> and I know it's coming down to the time when, you know, some of us don't want to wear anything over, over the head. And so, you know, the hairs get cold and it's like hurting, it's like having pain and so forth. And so we're going to look at something that we can do. But before we do the natural treatment, remember, take the necessary precautions. All right, so this evening, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. For the, um, for the hair pain, we're going to be using garlic. All right, and we know that garlic is a powerful antibiotic, antimicrobial property, and antibacterial property. Right? And we're going to be using olive oil. So what you want to do for this, We're gonna mince them. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna mince it very fine, or if possible, just take it off and rinse it. And um, if you don't wanna use a knife, I like to use my grater, and I grate it. Can you see? Yeah. All right. one demonstration purposes, right? And um you're gonna put it in a small bottle, preferable a dark colored bottle. We're gonna store it in a bottle like this, right? Because after you infuse it with the olive oil Right? 
you're gonna um, put it in this bottle and put it on the windowsill where you can find the sunshine and it will stay there and draw the garlic. The oil will pour the garlic into it, right? And then you can use it. You can use it for the pain in your hair. So you drop like two drops when you have the pain, right? And you can store it in the fridge. You don't have to strain it. For some people, they want to strain it. You can also blend it, right? And put it and store it in the fridge. And after you do that, then you want to use some onion. Because what onion does, onion has drawing properties and it is very good for inflammation. So what you can do when you put the oil in is slice some onions. And after you slice it, you're going to put it in an oil. Mix it with water in a paste 
and then you apply the paper on the cloth, and then you put it over and with the saran wrap, and it will help. Ground and flat seed, yes, man. For, for, for this one, for the flat seed, for the for the other four hours, yes, man. Any more questions? The charcoal, six hours. Any more questions in regards to that one? All right, very good. Let's move on.
I would pray to God and say, Lord, help me not to forget to take my flu shot. I would take it in the morning, I would take it at lunchtime, and I would take it in the evening. And for the last six years, I haven't had the flu shot. People around me that work with me have gotten the flu shot and gotten the flu, and I have not. So, Lord, I praise God for that. Yes. Also works. Yes. All right, so I'm putting everything in my cup. Three times a day. Or you can take 
take it as often as you're coughing because sometimes you have aggressive cough and you need to take it more regularly. So, but I would say three times. So how long does it last before it could get rancid or? It doesn't really get rancid as long as you keep it in the fridge. Well, if you left the onion in it, onions go bad. No, not the onion. You can't remember onion is getting easy like preservative. It's not like that. Or if you don't want to do that, you can strain it off after a couple of days. I've had mine in the fridge for months, and it was still good. And it was good. Yeah, yeah I had Yes. You, you're sick already, so you don't want to burn the digestive system with more food, more yeah. things to digest. But like she says, you just drink the liquid from it. And if you're only making for one sickness, don't make for the next month, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's easy to make. And you don't even have to strain it out if you don't want to. Just take the liquid from the top. It's simple. All right. Can we move forward now? Yes. All right. Good. <laughs> yeah. Extra piece. 
one stung me and the other one afterwards. And I went straight to the kitchen. I took some charcoal that didn't work. And then I was just getting very itchy all over. I was having a, a terrible allergic reaction where I was rushed to the hospital. Almost my throat could have closed up. And then I you know, received some medications from them. And then when I went back to where I was, my hand the next day was really swollen, very swollen. I looked like Popeye, you know, the sailor man, like the hand was really big. And then after doing charcoal poultice, that didn't work so well. And one day just doing the cabbage poultice, my hand went back to normal the next day. It pulled all that fluid out. So I'm a testimony to cabbage poultice. I had it on for the whole night.
Well, that's for the swelling, because the, 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 the magnesium will help the core. So if, if you want to do the, the one for the inflammation and swelling, all you have to do is get a little bit of water. I'll show you how to do that one. Yes. All right, so you just need a little bit of water to mix your Epsom salt. Okay, if you put too much water in it, it's going to become too um, runny, right? So I put a little bit. And that will be your consistency. Right? And so you put it to your cabbage leaf. And wherever you have the swelling, you're going to wrap it around that swelling and it will help the cold. Okay. Is, this, is this good for arthritis? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. Swelling of the uh, fingers? Even the fingers, yes, ma'am. You got to put it on the fire first. Put it on the fire, you said first. Burn it first, you said. Warm it on the stove or something. Yeah, yes, you can warm it in the, um, not the microwave. Oh, it's not the microwave. Um, on the stove? On the stove or just or something? You can actually uh, put a pot on the stove and you can put it in the pot and it will warm. Yes, you can do that too. Yes, sir. Is this an option? The, the, for the swelling? Um, yes, it's just another option. Yes. Any more questions in regards to um, that one? Say, for instance, you have a liver congestion. You can do the same thing with the carrots and the cabbage this time. Where you do the carrot, the, the carrot qualities, put it on the, cab, on, the, on the cabbage leaf, and you're going to put it over your liver and wrap, wrap it with the syrup wrap and leave it overnight and it will help to pull that congestion. Anybody know what this is? Radish. It's the white, white radish, right? Do you know that you have a black radish too? Radish. When it comes down to your lungs, this is your friend. Any form of lung input um, problem you have, this is your friend. You can do the white one mixed with the black one. It's just that it is very spicy. You can get the old foods, right? And so I had a client that had, um, she has liver cancer. And, um, it has spread around the body. And um, she started having jaundice and all of that. And so the Lord shows me that I could use the radish. And so I got the black radish and the white radish and um, some other stuff. And I juice, I extract the juice from it. And um, it was very harsh. But so you have to keep it like in small proportion. I mix it with a, and I did mix it with a little bit of cayenne pepper in spite of the fact that it was so hot. Right? And um, I would put a little ginger and a little garlic. Right? I'll also get to that. And I started giving that to her. And I tell you, I know the power of God. It helps to pull the journey out. Is because she was having liver cancer. So what, what it actually does, it helps to um, stimulate the gallbladder, right? And create a road for it to leave the body, right? And so in regards to the lungs, right? You can use, um, you can use, where's my honey? Two ounces of honey. One ounce of radish, so you have to extract the juice. So you want the white radish and the black radish. No, I would have blend it. If you have a juice extract, the extract the juice because it's much more potent, right? And I, I tend to say, I would have blend it. I would have blend it because I think it has a tendency to spoil away. But when you extract the juice, I find that it stays longer. Right, and so I extract the juices and I put three ounces of fresh turmeric, one ounce of ginger, 
I've never used a car. I never used a powder, but if that's all you have, go for it. I like to use the fresh turmeric. Three ounces of turmeric. Are you talking about juice? Turmeric juice? Right, juice. You juice it. And then you juice the grapefruit because you need like four ounces of um, grapefruit juice. Or you can use two ounces of grapefruit juice and two ounces of lemon juice. Right? And then after which, you want to um, put four clover five. The garlic is the last thing you put in. You're going to blend everything together now with the juices with the garlic and then you strain it. And then you're going to give the person that for the lung. That will help the lung. If you have bronchitis, if you have asthma, any one of the lung problems, this will help a lot. And remember, there's no power in these cups now. The power comes from God. But when you pray over it, God promised that he will do what he wants to do. One ounce of each. Yes. Yes. You just one. Right. No. Okay, uh, it's two different radish. Four. Then you blend the garlic and then you strain it. Oh, one teaspoon. I don't think that he got the pamper, but I know he used one of the towel and just wrapped it up quickly. 
But then I called for my spiritual mom. And um, she got the cayenne pepper and she poured it in it. Right? Because what are we trying to do? We're trying to stop the bleeding because it cut so deep. I mean, my, all my, my vital signs started dropping. And I was losing so much blood. And so she, she, she ran in and she says, give me a grapefruit. And she took the grapefruit and she got out the piece of it quickly and mixed it with the cayenne pepper and used it to wrap it. What did the grapefruit do? The grapefruit helped to close it, to close it in. But the cayenne pepper tried to um, stop the bleeding. No, the, the, I'm going to show you this. So all she did, she used a small piece of grapefruit and God 
has an amazing God. Right? And he has given all of these little things to us for our benefit. He knows that we do not deviate from the part, and he knows that we will need these things. So, let us utilize these things to help others as well as ourselves. Any other questions? If not, we will pray. Let us pray. Dear kind and gracious eternal Father, we are so thankful, Lord, for your simple, natural remedies, Lord, that you have given us to help to aid the body in its healing. Father, you designed that the body will heal itself, and here it is, you give us some assistance, Lord, to speed up that recovery. Lord, we know there's no power in any of these things that we have done today, but the power that you will give it, Lord, to heal our bodies. So, Lord, we're just so thankful for this information, and as the prayer request was at the beginning, that we may receive great wisdom, Lord, in how to administer um, natural remedies, Lord, to help ourselves, to help others, and to be a wonderful ministry and a, and a witness to others that we come in contact with. So, Lord, we're so thankful for the Holy Spirit's leading today, and we're so thankful for our dear sister Karine, who um, was volunteered, Lord, and was used by you in a very special way to bless others. So, Lord, we ask now that as the Sabbath hours are still here, we ask, Father, that we may continue to glorify your name, and that the blessing that the Sabbath holds, Lord, may continue to be on us. Bless and strengthen us now, as I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.